when you're dealing with people's emotions, especially the strong emotions and the more of a depth psychology, um, it can invoke an awful lot of uh, emotion within the therapist too. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, how do you suggest uh, someone, especially new or unfamiliar with this, coming into it, mm -hmm. uh, what do you suggest for them as far as, uh, I guess, being more prepared, more aware of mm -hmm. what they might face the going on within themselves? Well, I mean, for people who are interested in, in um, further training in this approach, um, I'm always recommending that they simultaneously do their own uh, self-exploration processes and their own um, therapy or mm -hmm. therapeutic process. Um, because, um, for a number of reasons, I mean, for, for one, like you said, strong emotions can be evoked and um, you know one needs to know how to um, calm oneself and and recognize what's going on and, and take care of, of themselves and sometimes that means take care, taking care of themselves outside of the session um, and also I, I mean it seems important for people to be able to put themselves into the shoes of the client and really try to imagine what it's like to be them and to be in that um, place. So I, I think that there's really no better way to do that than to have your own experience of being on that side of, of the dynamic. Sure. Um, so um, I, I recommend um, people do their own self. And, and that's typically a part of, um, traditionally been a part of experiential training is, is um, we learn an awful lot about ourselves in the process and that helps us to be um, more empathic and more available um, to our clients. Um, and when I think back on my training in emotion focused therapy, um, I think that my own therapy has been pivotal in that. Um, doing my own therapy has been pivotal in that whole process. Um, in helping me to understand what's helpful, what's not helpful, um, what it's like experientially, phenomenologically, to be the client, so. Is there a, um, we talked about experiencing phenom or phenomenological, um, mm -hmm. uh, and you talked about calming yourself. Mm -hmm. Is there also a, an availability to cry with your clients? Or is mm. it better to stay somewhat detached? Uh, to, well, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think, for clients and in talking to clients and talking to people about this issue, it, it does seem like people say that when they see that their therapist is moved, mm -hmm. um, so if they tear up when they're talking, that they actually find that quite um, comforting and it really tells them that their therapist really cares about them. So that seems important and I think that's, you know, great if people can, you know, if that's, if people can express that. Um, yeah, but at times I think it's important to be able to calm yourself. And I don't know if it's so much about remaining detached, because I think I remain very compassionate. Mm -hmm. But I think that it is it is about calming myself and being available for them. So if I'm totally overwhelmed by my sadness, mm -hmm. um, I don't think I'm going to be able to be available to them anymore. So I think, again, it's about making those distinctions about what sadness and how much and, mm -hmm. and um, there's a difference between being moved by someone else's sadness and um, being overwhelmed in a wash in your own sadness so you mentioned uh, research mm -hmm. and what is your what is your latest research and what is your latest research and scholarship focused on right so I'm actually working towards a, a, um, further development of the theory of um, emotion focused therapy, case formulation and emotion focused therapy, um, and articulating that and working on a book on case formulation and emotion focused therapy. Um, we're also developing the theory um, of emotion focused therapy for eating disorders. Um, also working to further articulate um, a particular task that we do in emotion focused therapy that works on a specific kind of emotional processing problem. So when people um, present with um, shame or vulnerability, then we typically will 
provide them with empathic affirmation and go through a process of exploring the shame and and, and uh, vulnerability until such time as they kind of go through and hit that emotion, hit rock bottom, and begin to come back out and find their resources and their strengths. Um, and so we're working on uh, trying to further articulate the model of how to actually do that in therapy. Um, also working on uh, couples, a little bit on the couples research, trying to articulate those attachment and identity processes in emotion focused couples therapy. Um, and that's all that I can think of at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that works. Great. Uh, you mentioned that if someone was interested that they could contact you. Mm -hmm. um, what's the best way to contact you? Um, they could email me. Okay. Uh, should I tell you my email? Is, that's totally up to you. <laughs> okay. Um, no, that's fine. I can, I'm happy to. Um, so my email is Rhonda, R-H-O-N-D-A, dot Goldman, G-O-L-D-M-A-N, at Comcast.net, okay. or rgoldman at argosy.edu. Okay. So people, that's, at this point, the, probably the best way to get in touch with me. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking time out of this. Oh, I really schedule. appreciate you interviewing me. You bet. Thank you very much. Okay, great.